The history of public education in Hawaii extends back to the time of the Hawaiian monarchy. Throughout the 19th century, public education was conducted exclusively in the Hawaiian language. But in 1896, just three years after the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy, the use of the Hawaiian language was banned by law, resulting in its near extinction. Papahanakaiapuni Hawaii, the Department of Education Hawaiian Language Immersion Program, was first implemented in Hawaii's public schools in 1987. The primary purpose of the Papahanakaiapuni Hawaii is to re-establish the Hawaiian language and culture as the foundation for quality education. Currently, there are seven Hawaiian immersion sites located throughout the islands with over 750 children attending grades kindergarten through eight. Plans are to provide for yearly expansion until the program encompasses grades kindergarten through 12. From the program's inception, two of the most crucial needs are the availability of qualified teachers and curriculum materials. While this is to be expected, when realizing that there has not been a need for resources such as these in the past 100 years, it is now critical that state and private organizations join forces to collaborate efforts aimed at meeting the program's unique needs. The Papahanakaya Puni Hawaii offers a comprehensive educational program through the medium of the Hawaiian language. The Department of Education looks upon the University of Hawaii system as a major contributor towards the development of appropriate instructional materials to support the use of Hawaiian as the dominant language throughout the kindergarten through 12th grade program. A maho pe e paani ana o ko me ka ha upoho. Yeah! O ke ala hele o ka meha meha ko mako mana o nui o ke ia hua ka i no laila kipa mako i ke ia. A ole na vahi a kau, e a ole mako i hele i a vini. A ka o na vahi a e, hele no mako ma laila. A puni ka mako puni. In 1994, the Model Immersion Curriculum Development Project began at the University of Hawaii at Manoa to establish a cooperative network of educational and community organizations 
University of Hawaii faculty and students, and the immersion community. Content, cultural, and educational specialists from a variety of organizations have made themselves available as consultants for and participants of this project. This networking has provided experiences for prospective immersion teachers and curriculum developers that focus specifically on Hawaiian immersion curricula issues. Kamako hawi no ke ila, e kukane mako e piliana e kawaa o kawa kahi koloa, e wa kau kahi, e wa lavaia, e wa holopea, a hiki mai ke ia u ho, o kawa kau lua, a ho makane mako me ere e vehe vehe ana e piliana e kawa mamu koloa, e kono manawa e no hoana i ka aina nui o kona. E pili ana i nga waa lawa ia o kila manawa. O au ke ia o ana kala ka ana nga no miloli i au ma kona. He wahi lawa ia ke la ka ana o ko ma kou no hoana i leila he lawa ia ka hana. A he o ana no a ma kou Kanu hoa i iuka ka kula, a na mea kanu a lākou e kanu, a e ke kalo, a ino ma ke kalo ka ola, a mena anu mea kanu i leila, e ola i ka kinu a kākou, a ma kai hoi, ka pili ane ka liikai, a e ka moana, a o ka i anō. A o e i a ko mākou mea a i, a ola i a i ka kinu. Field experience was an integral part of this project as well. Weekly classroom visits to the Kula Kaiapuni Oweyo has allowed students to become familiar with and prepared for the immersion classroom. Most of the energies within this project have been focused on authoring and developing instructional and resource materials that are culturally based thematic units integrating a number of content areas. Aloha, my name is Leilani Poliahu and I'm a student here at UH. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in accounting and now I'm in the College of Education get, working towards my professional diploma in elementary ed um, so I can become a teacher for the Hawaiian Immersion Program. I can see that um, the things that I learn in English in my education courses, I, they're, they're really good and, um, you know, good theory and everything, but you can't take them and just apply them directly into the immersion program. That's why this, this class has been um, really helpful for me to, um, to learn more about teaching our Hawaiian children um, and that the theories that we learn in the English schools, um, we have to Hawaiianize them and customize them for our children for the Hawaiian Immersion Program. I think the main thing is for us to always <coughs> um, look at the bring the Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian values into your teaching, which is what I'm doing with my um, project that I'm working on for this class. Um, I'm taking a science class at the College of Ed, so I wanted to do something to do with science, and I picked wind because um, I don't, there's a lot of um, stories about wind and a lot of melee about wind, um, so I was really interested in doing something on that. Um, so I'm working on the science part. Um, I wanted to have some you know, experiments and some resources to actually teach the science um, concepts about wind, but in the immersion program, I also wanted to bring in the um, the way the wind was um, related in the Hawaiian culture. And as I've been doing the research, research, I find the Hawaiians attributed personalities to the winds. So the winds, um, the type of wind they were, it's like the wind had a personality, and the name, they, even the names that they gave the winds, were related to the personality of the wind. As part of this class, when we visited Waiau, um, I was able to go visit the fourth grade class, um, Pua 
Dorian's class, and I also visited the combination fifth, sixth grade class, and um, I got to talk with some of the children and to see some of their opinions about school, what they liked, what they didn't like, and I was really surprised to see almost all of them liked math the best, and that's really, um, I thought that was special. I've tried to um, work on my language to to learn because there's a whole other language within the immersion school that you don't use in regular conversation. I've tried to um, strengthen that part of um, my language. Aloha kako. My name is Kaheli Duklo and I'm from Maui. And I graduated from the University of Hawaii with a bachelor's degree in Hawaiian studies and a certificate in Hawaiian language. Um, after graduating, I went back to Maui and taught second grade in immersion at Pa'ia School for a year and then decided to come back to the university to get my master's in education to continue teaching in immersion. I realized that even though we're changing the language from English into Hawaiian, we needed that, I, I feel that we need to change a lot more, not just the language. I think we need to change um, our teaching methods, um, the kind of student groupings we do. Just, I, I just feel that the language isn't enough. We need to change everything about our education in order to meet the needs of our students, of our Hawaiian students. As far as the um, kinds of curriculum that we're developing in this class for Kayapuni, um, my project has to do with um, plants, Hawaiian, native Hawaiian plants. And I felt that um, if we could develop more academic resource material for the use in the classroom by the teacher and the students, that it would be a big plus. So what we are doing is trying to get some things together for native Hawaiian plants and um, pictures of them, drawings of different parts and what they're used for. They're mainly like plant descriptions, what they're used for, um, different kinds of stories about the plants, where, where you can find information about these plants. And um, in English, it might seem like, you know, where there's a lot of information out there, but in Hawaiian and for children, there is almost nothing out there. Aloha, my name is Kehaulani Pu'u. I'm a student here at UH. I'm currently a senior, double majoring in Hawaiian studies and Hawaiian language. I think I'd like to be a teacher, though. I'm not sure at what level, but I think, you know, I could even get into curriculum development because you're affecting what, you know, the children of tomorrow are going to be learning. And um, that in itself is enough reason for me. And it's, it's fun too, you know, researching and learning, learning all of these new things. I think every teacher should be required to learn about format. I don't know if it is, you know, a requirement, but every teacher should because um, that system teaches us that there are four different learning styles. You know, there's the analytical learner who likes lectures and, and you know, book work and the, the practical learner who likes to do hands-on things and the dynamic learner who likes to do anything. And then the I think the learning style one was sensitive learner, you know, who learns by feeling and who goes on on um, intuition. As teachers, we should we should accommodate and adapt our lesson plans in order to accommodate all four learning styles. And for Kapo'e Hawai'i, you know, Kaipo Hale was saying that a lot of Hawaiians are type one and four learners, and but yet in schools, you know, type two and type three are what are accommodated the most. And um, so I think that helped a lot because it makes you aware as a teacher, you know, okay, I need to reach out to all four styles. And when you develop your lesson plan, you're gonna develop something that is gonna accommodate everybody and not just type two and three, you know, so that all of us can learn. Developing immersion curriculum is challenging and rewarding for University of Hawaii students who are preparing for a career in Hawaiian language education. Vigorous research that includes traditional Hawaiian 
and contemporary knowledge and skills is helping to provide the foundation for a culturally relevant curriculum. Wisdom shared by our native speaker Kupuna and found in 19th century Hawaiian language texts provide rich historical and cultural sources for materials development. The network created by the Model Immersion Curriculum Development Project represents initial efforts in focusing resources and energies to produce immersion materials. These efforts must be expanded to ensure the continued quality and development of the Papahanakai Yopuni Hawaii, which in turn will ensure the survival of the Hawaiian language into the 21st century. <laughs>